Hi friends, this is a version of cooking. I wanted to basically talk about drying and saving herbs. They are the easiest thing to preserve and to handle in our gardens. And I want you guys to feel confident and like you can do it yourself and we don't have to be super heady about it. So <laughs> I want you guys to know that it is an incredibly simple process. I have done some videos about this before. I think there's a longer class, I'm gonna to link to it, I'm pretty sure it's in there, of actually like how different ones and like making teas and like, it was a whole class. So you can rewatch that one if you want to, that is a longer class, but this one's kind of a refresher in case you have, and to kind of give you guys a place to ask questions if you want to. But basically we're gonna talk about a couple things, probably some that you're growing in your garden. We talked about tending to them, but now this is going to be our cooking segment about how to save them, like preserve them for long storage. And I'm going to show you some of mine from last year. I'm going to show you what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to talk through like how to do like the best way to do most of them. And then lastly, I am just going to reference a few ways that we can use them. So I think this will be very helpful and very informative, but I'm gonna make it quick because none of us are all busy and we are enjoying our garden. So first of all, let me show you my setup right here. Sorry, my chamomile, we're almost done, <laughs> it's here. But I utilize, you can make like, I think I can link to, I think it was, I think it was Mallory. Mallory posted about her making these screens, which you can do. Um, you can also just use, like I use wood boards and the reason I use them is they have airflow. So I noticed if you use plastic boards, if you use other sort of boards, they don't work as well. But if you have a wood cutting board of any kind, there's enough airflow with the wood because it's a natural material that you don't get molding happen. The only problem is, is sometimes when you're drying things like calendula, you're going to have, you know, some coloring that's going to happen. So one way that I dry a lot of things is this way. I, you'll even see, I have some peppers here. Yes, you can dry peppers. They don't mold. Um, if you keep them separated, these are jalapenos and I have lots of things. I have some bee balm right here. These little threads, they came off of the bee balm. I have chamomile flowers, sorry. Right here, I have calendula, which is just a flower. Once again, just like chamomile. And what else do I have here? I have some Tulsi over here. And, but this did not dry on here. So the other way that we can do things, I do all my chamomile this way, I do all my calendula this way, and I do a lot of other like bee balm, things like that. This is completely a great way to do it. It is a longer process. It depends on how dry your home is. If you live somewhere where it's really humid, this isn't going to be a good idea. Um, or if you don't have a climate controlled home, meaning you don't have air conditioning, you don't have like in home heating, anything like that, you're going to not have as easy a time with this process. So you're going to need to do it in something called a dehydrator. I don't have mine out right now. I just put it away because it was taking up most of my kitchen. But you can find dehydrators online. There's lots of different kinds. I'm gonna to link to the one that I have. It's a really reasonable price one. It takes up a lot of space though. So if you live in a smaller space, you're going to want a smaller one and they work just as well. You don't wanna use your oven, even on convection, because it, the heat could be too much. Like it doesn't get low enough. Usually a dehydrator is working between 100 like or even 80. Some of them go down to 80 degrees up to um, only 150. So you don't want to really go beyond that because you actually, it no longer is also a raw um, active ingredient. It's now been cooked. So you lose and can degrade some of the nutrient and um, oils and things like that. So it's not exactly as easy as just like popping it in the oven. We'll talk about that as we have other things that we're preserving, but that's not one of them. them. So. I use a dehydrator a lot with like um, onion stalks, um, you know, leaves that are really thick. Basil works really well. What it does is it like condenses the oils really well. I use it on uh, <laughs> lemon verbena. Um, 
Our neighbors actually used it on some limes and these are dehydrated limes. So you can do it on all sorts of things. Uh, I love the dehydrator. It just takes time and it takes a lot of space on, there's a constant hum <laughs> in the house. So those are all things to consider. But most of these things, once they're dry, and in fact, like this, you can see this is still, the chamomile is very fresh, oh, sorry, is very fresh, um, it's soft, it's pliable, and then this is all dried. And so once it's dry, I do keep this open. The reason we want it dry is that if we don't, it's gonna mold. So you don't want it to mold. And I'm always like still watching, I'm like, ooh, is it dry enough? So this is all dry enough, and you can see, it's a huge jar and I fill it every year and that's how I know I'm done harvesting chamomile because this is the amount that we use and share throughout the year. And at the end of the year, we only had this much left before when I started this over again. So it's the right jar, but you want something that's airtight that will seal once you have it done. So at this point, this is actually ready to close. So you wanna do that. Now, I have other things over here. So with calendula specifically, you guys are probably all growing it in your garden. You can also do this with marigolds. It's the same type of plant, really. This is a pot marigold, technically, but um, you can do it with regular marigolds that you have in your garden because they're edible as well and they hold a lot of properties. So this morning I already did this. I don't have any that are particularly dry right now, but you want to dry the plant before and I like to do it so you can kind of see how beautiful the bloom is. I set them upside down. These ones are kind of getting close but the the threads or the petals should be completely crispy and dried up. This is a really close example of what it should look like um, and then you take the threads off the head and you get these beautiful petals and what I'm going to do is I'm going to condense them and share them along with like chamomile marshmallow root uh, or marshmallow flowers, um, lavender, things like that. I'm going to combine them and put them into oil. And then that oil becomes like an oil that I use in my body all um, winter and even now into the summer. So I'm just using the last of it from last year right now. So you can easily do this. Um, the other way that I dry things is in bundles. So I have these over here. These are just air dried in the house. They're ready. This is lemon balm. And I just cut it down to the bottom of the stalk. And I just take these off. I'm gonna move this. And I just take it off. And then you just wanna like crumble it in a bowl. <laughs> I'm not doing it right now. I'm in a bowl. I somehow have like lost all bowls in my house. Um, I think they're all being used. But um, so you just take it off like this. I'm just going to do some of it, but it should be dry enough that it should just come off. This has been drying for almost three weeks, just so you know. Um, now, the only downside of this is that it can get mold. It can, um, and the mold's usually like the soft gray type. It's pretty apparent. And it can get dusty. It can, so if you have a dust allergy, it may not be ideal uh, if you're going to be consuming it. And it does, um, it doesn't condense the oils as well. So if I were to do the same plants in a dehydrator, lemon balm has a lot of oils in it. So they're really beneficial. I didn't have enough time to put it all in the dehydrator leaf by leaf, but since I didn't, I, this is, you know, the difference. This is still a little soft. Um, so I'd probably leave this on the counter a little bit longer. Our house is really dry in the summer because of the airflow that we get but it still takes a little bit of time. So I just crumble it up and then I'll put it into an airtight container like a ball jar and put it away. And so here's some of the ones that I have from last year. So you can see this is sage. I did this all dried. Um, I still have this much sage. Um, I should send it to a friend, I guess. But this was all air dried. This was not dehydrator dried. It would be even more potent if I had dehydrated it. Uh, let's see, the other one that was really great in here. I think I still have some. Yes, plenty of it actually. I didn't know I had that much. It's basil. So I highly suggest doing your basil in a dehydrator. It is exceptionally better. Same thing with mint. 
um, your mint tea will be outrageously good with a dehydrator. So this is all dried from last year. You don't want to mix. Like if I have this leftover, I'm going to label this 2021. It's still good. Like it will be good for another two years, actually. Like, um, but you just want to make sure that you save it, um, in a way that is going to, <laughs> um, you know, keep it that way. This is lemongrass from last year. I really should process this, but this was all air dried and then I just um, broke it up into little pieces. You can also freeze lemongrass and shred it with a zester. There's all these things. I even, if you guys grow Thai basil, Thai basil works so well as saved. It has a more peppery scent when it's dried, uh, but it's really good on fish and other seafood. So I love using it that way. Let's see. And then I have a little bit of lavender left from last year. And so I'll probably use this up soon, but you can do almost all these things. Basically, if the leaf is tender, like lemon balm, basil, things like that, parsley, you're going to want to dehydrate those things. If it has a woodier stem, they're going to be better in, in like air dried. So like lavender, rosemary, thyme, all of those are going to be great done just air dried. So, and if it's a flower, let it air dry on a board. So that's kind of my way that I go about it. It seems really complicated. Like when you start looking at all these different plants, but it's not. They all can be really saved the same way. It's just some of them are do better in certain ways or not. And the main thing is, is make sure it's fully dry before you store it. Now there's other ways to preserve our herbs, such as like in oil and butter compounds, um, in the freezer with oil. That's what I meant with oil. I do not suggest taking fresh items and putting them in oil or vinegars, um, because it's a really great way to get sick, sadly. Um, unless it's like been cooked and then I would do it washed and cooked. So even dehydrating it will eliminate those chances of that happening. So it's just like botulism can happen pretty easily. Please Google it and like research it before you do it. And so just know that I don't recommend it. I don't do that. If I put fresh things in oil, it's only going on my body and it's not going in my mouth. <laughs> so, um, I'm a pretty big stickler on that. So that's the gist of it. If there are specific herbs or things like that you want to know about what to do, things like that, please let me know. If you want to know how to use these things, basically I make tea. I, let me grab my tea pot really quick and show you. So I have a teapot. I have a little strainer. You can also, I have an insert strainer as well from OXO that I'll link to. That's great. Any sort of teapot, as long as it's, you know, ceramic or something like that is great. Um, you don't really want to use metals, stainless steel, things like that for a teapot because they can like leach metals and stuff like that into your teapot. So you don't want that because some of the um, herbs will actually like release metals. <laughs> There's like, I don't know, science is cool, but ceramic is the best. It's the best way to stay safe in terms of that. So you just take this and you plug it in there and let it steep for five to 10 minutes in warm to hot water. You don't want it to be boiling hot because you could actually like harm the plant, but about hundred degrees is about what you want. And then you just let it steep. I love particularly doing Tulsi lemon balm, uh, even lemon verbena is really great as well in there with bee balm and chamomile though. That one's like one of my favorites. We drink that all winter long. <laughs> it's so good. You can also do more savory style ones. You can actually steep sage in some of them. I, if you're a, wo a woman, particularly red raspberry leaf and nettles are really great for your you know, overall womanly being. So all those things are really powerful, but chamomile and mint are actually kind of harsh on the digestive tract. So you want to make sure that you're not, if you're having stomach issues, don't drink those. 
Mint on its own is exceptional and wonderful and has its own benefits. But if you're having stomach issues or maybe you've had a stomach bug, stay away from those ones, uh, at least until you're feeling better. So, but I love adding, adding lavender and things like that into all of them because the oils release and it's really beautiful and wonderful and calming. So, uh, yes, I think that's it. I, it's pretty simple and I don't wanna take too much of your time. If you guys have specific questions, feel free to leave them. I'm happy to answer them for you as always. So thanks so much. And we'll do more of these cooking classes and I'm going to show you how to save other things this summer so that you can do it really easily and simple without a lot of work because it shouldn't be a lot of work. We have too much other work to do. <laughs> okay. See you later, friends.